before we even get into this, I want to just tell you that there's something that a lot of Chinese women like to do, okay? When they travel, What's that? When they travel abroad, yeah. okay? When they travel to Korea and they travel to Japan. Right. And that is to go and dress up in <laughs> traditional Korean clothing or traditional um, Japanese clothing, specifically Japanese clothing, a lot. Sure. Uh, my wife did it. Um, all my Chinese students, you know, that were young adults... If they ever had the chance to travel to Japan, they always go to Kyoto or something like that, rent a kimono, you know, and then they dress you up, they do your hair up for you. And then you mm. get to walk around the sort of beautiful temple grounds. You mm. walk around the parks with the sakura trees and that kind of thing. Not my thing. take photos. But then again, I am not a woman that likes to cosplay. So I get why people like it. I think it's awesome. Sure. Um, you know, I, I'm saying personally. Yeah, you would. I don't usually wear kimonos. No, neither while do walking I. Walking through, strolling through a little park yeah, forest. Exactly. Right. Uh, I mean, I had a lot of fun when I went with my wife because it was during Hanami season, and we got to see a lot of that. My wife dressed up uh, in in her kimono. I actually bought her a uh, kimono, and uh, we walked around. Mm. You know, the different in Osaka, the, the temples and stuff, and the big park, and it's like all those old castles. So it's very it's picturesque. Interesting you bought one because, like, I feel like the only time you're ever going to use that in your entire your life is that one occasion yeah well i mean it turned out by the way it was a secondhand one but you know if you buy a secondhand oh, okay. japanese anything it's new yeah it's well taken care it's of. incredibly yeah. well taken care of if you've ever bought like secondhand japanese electronics or something sure. in japan they're just like buying something new it turned out it would have it was the same to buy it that it would have been to rent one okay so, so it might as well right? yeah just and have it as a keepsake even if yeah, she never wears that it makes again, sense. because she could never wear it in china no, um, that's the thing. You'll see why. You'll, yeah, it's it's just one of those things. But what I'm trying to get at here is that it's incredibly common, and it's a common thing for Chinese people to do when they yeah. travel abroad yeah. all the time, and they Nothing love to it. take photos, um, you know, of themselves wearing yukata or kimono or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, there is a huge following of Japanese pop culture and um, anime mm -hmm. and manga and that kind of yeah. thing in in China as well. And so people enjoy cosplaying. Yes. Okay. And if you don't know what cosplaying is, it's dressing up. It's playing dress up. Yeah. It's literally, that's what it is. People dress up like their favorite I mean, TV character. Yeah. The uh, the average cosplayer is going to be dressed as their favorite anime character. That's normally what it is. It's usually what it is. Or a You're game be, uh, character. What's popular? Um, uh, the Hunter x Hunter. Naruto or something. Naruto. You're going to dress up as, uh, you know, one of those dudes. Yeah. Or chicks. Yeah. 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 So um, this is what happened last week, okay? I'm going to put this on in the background here for In fact, I'll get us out of here. Is a girl was wearing a cos... Well, she was cosplaying. She wasn't just wearing a kimono. She had a big blonde wig on as well. So she yeah, was just... She was cosplay. Cosplaying as an anime character. In China. Yeah, on the streets. Um, and let's see what happened. I'll just play it out for you eventually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 但是你是要合符 so uh, for those of you who can't understand Chinese, um, the, the most important thing here, you, if you read it, I mean, obviously, for yeah. those listening, is the fact that the police came up to her and started to hassle her. And she asked why. And they were like, well, if you were, if you were wearing Chinese, you know, traditional clothes, we wouldn't be having this conversation. And they screamed at her. You know, saying, you're Chinese, how dare you wear Japanese clothes? You're Chinese. And she's like, what What have I done wrong? You know, why do you have a right to scold me? I want some context here. To, it's very important. Okay, now this is important, though. She asks, what offense did I commit? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And the offense is picking quarrels and provoking trouble, which, by the way, is a real law in China. It's actually one of the, statistically, one of the higher, uh, most used crimes in China to nab people. You There's can a reason for that. You do, can use yeah, it for anything. You can do it for yeah. anything. If someone's like, I'm a, I don't like my my noodles. Yeah. And 
you know, the cops come around and you're making a scene, they can yeah. like arrest you for picking quarrels and provoking trouble. So a, a police officer, I mean, just so everyone understands, mm -hmm. a police officer is manhandling and arresting a young girl for dressing in a kimono with the blonde wig. Yeah, I, guys, I just have to <clears throat> say that some of you might try to draw a parallel and say, well, maybe it's the same as um, a Jewish person wearing some kind of German uh, clothing or something, but it's not. No. Because this is traditional Japanese stuff. The the, the kimonos and, and that type of thing are from thousands of years ago. This is not um, during the imperial Japanese invasion. This is not a military uniform that she's wearing. You know, no. no. So you no. cannot you cannot do that kind of equation. What's going on here is there's so much hatred for Japan that even if you try to wear a traditional Japanese outfit from thousands of years ago or hundreds of years ago, far long before any aggression <clears throat> between China and Japan, you're labeled as a traitor and you're arrested. Yeah, that's what doesn't make sense. Is if, like you said, it would be culturally insensitive. I agree. Japan deserves so much of the hate that they got yeah. because of what. Japan did, Japan did as a awful nation things. under that leadership. Absolutely. Japan is not that now in no. Japan. And I get that there's still some bad blood because of the refusal for apologies and stuff like that. It's mm -hmm. a separate issue. Yeah. But Japan wasn't that prior to, the, to, to that incident either. Yeah. Right? So we're talking about also things that have heavy Chinese influence. You think Japan wasn't heavily influenced by China, ancient China? Of course it I is. I mean, this looks very similar to Wufu, which is like that ancient Chinese clothing. Yeah. All of this is intertwined in some way. You could always find different ways to actually excuse this. But the, yeah. you know, the point of the matter is, is that you don't arrest someone for wearing a cosplay outfit that's culturally acceptable pretty much everywhere. Everywhere in the and world. And the most important thing I want you guys to understand is what she's wearing here. When I was in China, when Winston was in China, up until, let's say, 20, 2016, 2017, would have been absolutely fine. Correct. No one would have given a shit about We this. used to go to restaurants where the staff used to dress like yep. this. You know, yep. this is something that the young kids would dress up and go to the park and stuff. We've seen it. That's my issue is that it was absolutely fine. Yeah. No, you might have gotten a snide comment from a, you know, a, a Chinese ox looking guy. Yeah, or an uncle right? or something. Um, Chinese ox, a character of the show, by the way. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, like an un undereducated kind of tattooed guy that's like a Han nationalist or something. Sure. You might get something like that. But the vast majority of people not only would not give a shit, but they might even take photos and be like, oh, that looks so pretty. Yeah. It was fine. So you realize that I am not talking about like a cultural remnant here. Yes, there's a, a pervasive hatred of Japan that has been there since I was in China. And yeah. it goes all the way back to Chairman Mao's time. Mm -hmm. But it's more than that. Yeah. It's now propelled to a level of so such insecurity and such brazen uh, just toxicness, like going after people for representing anything that's not Chinese now. Yeah. And in allowing the public to swarm them, mm. allowing public opinion to ruin people's lives, committing suicide in, yeah. in some places and some situations. Um, to allow society to get to this point and encourage it shows what nationalism is coming is, is seeding nationalism as being promoted yeah, by nationalism the and Party. xenophobia. Yeah, it's it's awful. It's promoted. Yeah, you know, I I take a, a, a huge amount of um, I don't know offense when it comes to this kind of thing because I would never go after somebody for wearing traditional clothing. No, you it's know, obscene. Yeah, even if it was, and that's another thing. Like I don't harbor a hatred for any particular country or nation sure. or anything like that and this shows that there's just pure and utter hatred towards cultural revolution 2.0 yeah. yeah it's awful you know how is a traditional um kimono or yukata or something how is that offensive how is that the nanjing massacre yeah it's not did they wear that during then no, no. you got like hirohito and the, the army guys with their you know uniforms and you're stuff. dressing as that yes Maybe a little bit of a different it's story. kind of like if a jewish person was dressing as an ss like nazi right. officer that massively poor then taste. you can understand yeah. it then you can understand why they'd be like get the hell out of here yeah but again maybe not we'll from a legal you. response right? yeah but you know but yeah you China, can you could understand that yeah. but this is not that right. she's dressed Dressing up as an anime character, for goodness sake, with a, a long blonde wig. Right. You know? Anyway. Blind hatred, just, and it's promoted. Just showing you that it's it's gotten to a point where people are being arrested for this. Now, let, let me flip this on its head a little bit. Right. There was a massive backlash mm -hmm. uh, online of the, with a lot of Chinese netizens that said, this is outlandish. Yeah. This girl was not alone, thank goodness. Yeah. Um, but... 
the legal response forced her to make a public she apology. She made a public apology saying that she she's... said, I'm sorry that I uh, de uh, defamed our country. I'm sorry that I was insensitive. I won't do this again. Mm -hmm. And she made allusions to going to Japan wearing Han, Han clothing, that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. It it's bad. bloody awful. It really is. It's so restrictive. Imagine you lived in, in a society where you're told you may not wear you may you not wear anything other than, you know, uh, a nationalist pride outfit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You may only wear that. Yeah. It's like if someone came to America and said, you may not wear any clothes except for like uh, red, white, and blue, or you can dress up like George Washington if you like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Otherwise, it's got to be like an American t-shirt. Yeah. With like a eagle on and it. jeans, yeah. that's okay. You got to wear you jeans. You have to hold a hot dog and a ha and a baseball cap. Yes. Yes. But it must be an American team. Yes, yes, yeah. Don't do not pick another. Yeah. Don't wear the Toronto Blue Jays. No, 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 oh. no. So you know, it's just if you look at it from from a logical and reasonable point of view, this what's going on in China right now is absurd. Right. And it's awful, and it's a lack of freedom, and it's xenophobia, and it's racism, and it's just. Crap. And speaking of racism, that's our next little clip here. I'm going to preface this. There's this girl who um, is a dancer. You can see her there in the background. And she's she's a person of color. You know, I I, I personally am a person of non-color. Mm -hmm. Just like you, all right? This person is a person of color. And uh, she went to China to be a dancer or do dancing. And she actually... Um, does a lot of defense for China, believe it or not. Oh, so I didn't know any context for her. She's done a lot of um, stuff sort of like excusing what the Chinese government does. And that oh, type wow, thing. really? Yeah, from from what I've heard. Are we going full shill level? Or are we going... Pretty much. But I mean, look, it's. I think anyone who goes to China to make a career there or to further their sure. career or whatever yeah, will it. always yeah. do that kind of stuff because sure. they realize that they have to. Yeah. And it also helps boost their career. It does, yeah. Sure. Anyway, she released this video, which has been going... Um, going all over the place, which is good for people to see. And we're just going to play it out for you very quickly over here. Okay, let's do it. I know how bad these comments really were on my dance video, like on Chinese social media. Yeah, we muted it for copyright reasons for this, this dancing. This dance, very talented. Yeah, and she's a good dancer. That's for sure. So these are the contents of the post. And as you can see, it's just pictures of monkeys, monkey dancing. A lot of really racist black people uh, leave China, leave kick the person kicking the black person, all these like disformed babies and all this monkeys, black hippos. Comments in Chinese saying, wow, animals can jump and like these gun photos and things like that. And it even goes as worse as like showing this swastika and stuff like that. But I just posted a dance video and there was all these things. And that happens anytime I post anything. Especially if I say like I'm black in the video, or if someone thinks that I'm black, or if I dance or do something that's like stereotypical black in China. And I saw other people posting, oh that's why I don't want to learn Chinese, or this makes me not want to learn Chinese or go to China anymore. I tell you, you know, sadly it doesn't matter where you are in the world, if you have a little bit of melanin in your skin, you're going to be treated like this. Now I'm going to call absolute bullshit on that by the way. Mm. By the way, sympathy for the shit she had to go through. Absolutely, but this this idea that you'll get treated like this if you got a bit of melon in, in in your skin anywhere in the world, absolute fucking bullshit. Sorry to say, especially if you're in Africa. Yeah, I mean, what the what the <laughs> fuck? I'm African, okay, so I right. take a lot of um, sure, sure. umbrage to this kind of. Yeah, thing. I don't like the generalization yeah. that every country but, is super racist like China. And I don't like the defense China of China's behavior. Yeah, yeah. Where else in the world will you have people, if you post a dancing picture of yourself as, a, as an African person or somebody with, you know, black skin or brown skin or whatever skin, where else in the world are you going to get people publicly on their social media posting pictures of gorillas and apes and stuff and calling you an animal? And telling you to die with guns yeah, and, leave and, and leave. Leave China, China and all that. That's bullshit. That when only was, happens in sheer, China. It was a sheer flood of that yeah. stuff. It wasn't like one yeah. Right, so that's yeah. the problem. Yeah, is it was the sheer flood of that. Yeah, you you and can she say said every I, time she I'll, posts. I'll give her the benefit of the doubt and say maybe she met there. Racism exists in every country. I'll say yes. Okay? Absolutely. Now, if you were to post yourself dancing mm. on social media in the U.S., I can guarantee you you would get less than one percent of the shit that she just got yeah. on social media in China. 
So there's no excuse for Not that. Not only that. You're allowed to be upset. Yeah. She's allowed to be upset. There are also hate speech laws, right. okay, in most countries, right. okay, in, in, in all developed countries anyway. Right. So if someone's going to go post on your social media stuff about dancing apes and, and equating you to gorilla and, you know, like putting swash sticker and, right. you know, really racist, disgusting comments, they're going to get in trouble. Yes. Okay. They're yes. going to have their account banned at the very minimum. And society will be against it yeah. at large. This is a, this is a, I'm going to say it right now. This is a uniquely Chinese problem. Okay. Right. And I mean it. And the unique Chinese problem I'm talking about here is the societally accepted open racism. Right. That is, it is, it's societally acceptable. And we know because we live there. Yeah. Okay. And when we walk with our black friends on the street, we will have people shouting it's out, Hey, way, it's he can't on him a chow, yeah. you know, like. They, they'll say all sorts of awful things right to their face, right while in earshot. Like, look at there's a, a black ghost. He smells bad. Look how ugly he is. You know, um, looks like a monkey. That Across kind of the thing. street. I don't yeah. want to be near him. Yeah. yeah. This kind of stuff. Openly. And the racism is, um, or oh, discrimination is probably a better word here. It goes everywhere. It doesn't right. matter who you are, what kind of foreigner you are. Uh, white foreigners get discrimination too. And it's, in many cases, a positive form of discrimination where they're like, oh, look, you know, here's a white foreigner. Let's let's invite him over to our table for drinks. Let's or, go and yeah, bo bother him. him. Let's go and talk to him and this and that and the next thing. So you know, you are um, you do suffer different types. And I've talked about this before. Either a positive form of discrimination or a very negative form of discrimination, like she's gone through here. And right. it's absolutely awful that she has to go through this stuff. But what what boggles my mind is the fact that she um, makes excuses for this. Sure. And I understand because she she's doing some shilling for China and she, you know, she's got a career there. Or and to stay safe in whatever. China, for sure. Yeah. But like, don't, I think it's bad for the the movement for anti-racism and on the whole to make excuses for it because then it turns away the eyes yeah. from, from, or the fingers from pointing blame at China for its very clear issue. Yes, it is a clear issue in China. Yeah. Open racism. I've made many videos about this. People shouting the N word at basketball players. For God's players. sakes, the Chinese government threw black people out on the street. Yeah, only black people. Only by black the way. people. Yeah, in Guangzhou because, because they thought they were the carriers of of COVID. Yeah, didn't allow them to stay in hotels. Yeah. Kicked them out of their apartments. It's at a state level, guys. Yeah. It's yeah. not a. It's not like an anomaly. No, it's not some some like racist rednecks in the woods or something. This sure. is like societally acceptable racism. Uh, right. specifically towards black people sure. that I've noticed living in China and uh, just everywhere. That's not to say that uh, all Chinese people are racist. I'm no, saying that it's, it's societally, societally acceptable yeah. in mainland China. Yeah, And the racist. Chinese government won't do anything about it. At the same time, they're colonizing Africa. Yes. And they're acting like they're the saviors of a lesser being. That's yeah. how they act on a state diplomatic level. Yes. And until people realize that and actually make them pay for, for doing that, Yeah. At a state level, at a diplomatic level, and to be completely acknowledge their bad behavior, then nothing is going to happen. Yeah. That's my issue. Correct. Let's see what else she has to say. We can't act like America's different. But what? You can't, we can't act like America's different? Yes, we can. That's some naivety right there. That's some uh, delusion right there. Yeah. Because America is different. If you post a video of yourself, here's a, here's a test. Post a video of your dance on um, American social media. TikTok, yeah. whatever. Instagram. Instagram. Make, put it on Instagram. Put it on Facebook. Put it on any. Put it on comments. YouTube. Let's see the comments. Let's see if everybody says you look like, uh, you know, like what the Chinese uh, disgusting racists wrote there on your. Video. I think this is a massive disservice to our black friends that are still in China too. Yeah. Is that they're combating this on a daily basis? Yeah. This is not fair. To, it's absolutely to just, not to fair. excuse it. And it's not fair to you. I'm talking no. to her. Yeah. It's not fair to her either. Yeah. It's... Address it. You gotta say, look, this is not normal. This is unordinary. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is like racism to the max, unfiltered racism. Right. It's completely unfiltered and out yeah. there. And it's acceptable because remember, in China, the internet and especially comments and discussions on the internet are the most censored in the world. Yes. If the Chinese government doesn't want something said or talked about or a certain behavior to be promoted, it gets completely silenced and censored. So when you've got hundreds, thousands of these racist comments comparing you to a baboon or an ape or whatever that they were doing over there and a dancing monkey and all that, that's because it's allowed. And right. when something is allowed on the Chinese internet, it means it's condoned right. in general by the government. Yeah. 
So, you know? I still anyway. get no excuse for like these type of things. Like, what the heck? What animal is this? Like, bruh, this is Ushi. I don't even know how to say that in English. Ushi means disgusting. Yeah. Go back to Africa, like. And whenever someone says like a positive comment, like this one, well, then someone responds with like these like bad comments. Like I said, it doesn't matter what it is. Now, there's so many layers to like racism, especially in. Yeah. Um. It's just unfortunately she, she just doesn't seem to understand what like racism is obviously because it's staring her in the face there and she just still makes excuses for it you know anyway so we just thought we'd bring that to your attention because it's been going around a little bit now um yeah. and it's awful that sort of behavior and i really i wish her all the best i really do hope that she realizes that that's something that she's going to have to live with if she's going to continue her career in china yeah, it's um, pretty rough. I feel like after a video like this, if it gets a lot of exposure, it might actually make the government step in. Yeah, which is a good thing. I'm glad she made it. Yes. Right. And I and I understand I understand she has to treat this with kid gloves. I yeah, get but it. But don't for a one second try to yeah. say that America's the same as that, because that's a lie. Right. An an absolute lie. Yeah. Because you can say there's racism in America, which of course there is. But you'll never get an unfiltered, socially acceptable tirade, uh, like tidal pool, tidal wave yeah. of uh, racism like you do in China. Right. Yeah.